from now, I will be harvesting my crops. Imagine where you will be, and it will be so. Hold the line! Stay with me! You find yourself alone, riding in green fields with the sun on your face. Do not be troubled! Oh, you are in Elysium! And you're already dead! I know you're on the toilet. I know you're watching this, drinking your coffee, eating your beer. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Your comments are a sacrifice to the algorithm god. A god of which, who likes to pump up the jam? Gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I am your host, the talking pair of Ray-Ban Wayfarers. Today we're going over shotgun setups and, and having a word salad about shotgun stuff. So welcome back to the channel. Sponsored me Danger Close Armament. They sent me this Glock 43X barrel. Looks super cool and golden in there. Um, they are a veteran owned and operated company, so I'm gonna link all of their stuff in the description down below. They've been around for a bit here in the firearms industry, so go check them out. Big thanks to them for sponsoring part of this video and channel. Ciao. Now, I wanted to go over like shotgun loadouts and setups and essentially just talk about it real quick. Now, it's not gonna be an in depth video, and I'm no in any way, shape, or form expert on the topic. I'm literally a dude on the internet who wears a ball of clava, so take everything I do and say with a grain of salt. It's my only advice I can give you that truly is concrete. You should do this with anything in life. Do your own research. I encourage you to do this, but I will give you what stuff I have come across, what stuff I have learned, and maybe you can apply it to your own kit setup or knowledge or regurgitate it to your friends that only have shotguns. Now, first off the bat, let me say that I don't think shotguns is my do-all, end-all weapon. It is, of course, a very um, niche tool to a niche problem, right? But I think shock can still have a place within firearms culture, within self-defense, and within maybe offensive capabilities, right? There are those cases of troops over in the Middle East using shotguns to repaint walls and room clearing situations, and they do work well within CQB to our understanding, right? Now, in a self-defense situation, if I was dealing with multiple bad guys and bad guys say had body armor, I, of course, would rather have a rifle where I could replace my shots and give myself greater distance, but shock can still serve a purpose. and one of those purposes is a force multiplier, at least in my opinion, against guys that have handguns. Now, I think shotguns come into place a lot more within law enforcement, and we see that more so with cops grabbing a shotgun. And, you know, at least for older times now, cops have more moved on to AR-15 setups with different style of ammunition, um, but you still can worry about overpenetration in certain shooting settings, say a cop with a 20-inch M16, and the rounds go through another wall and end up hurting the, a good person or killing a good person, right? Kill the bad guy, but you know, killing a good guy along the way, that doesn't look great, and it's not necessarily good, right? But these things do happen. How could a shotgun have differentiated that? I don't know. Maybe ballistically the, the double op buck maybe would have dissipated or something like that. So uh, neither here nor there, and I'm just being a armchair quarterback. Now, real quick, we'll go over the kit. Kind of what I wanted to talk about was the shotgun kit and how I'd set mine up if I was using a dedicated shotgun, um, you know, as, as a dedicated kit, right? Now, of course, I'd want, this is the core belt. Um, I've talked about it before. I can always link that video. Um, nothing too fancy, just a freaking belt, and, and whatever. Um, but essentially, I got all the tools I'd want to some kind of duty capacity. I threw some handcuffs in the mag pouch because I don't really have any shotgun shells over here. I'd rather have maybe another dump pouch of some kind that just gives you more storage of shells 
And the big thing with the shotgun is you're always feeding the gun, right? It's like tube, 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 unless of course you have mag, but even those shotgun mags become very goofy and cumbersome. But if you have a conventional shotgun that is shell fed, uh, say like a Benelium 4, 870, Mossberg, any of those, right? Any of the stuff we have here, um, then I'd rather have another option of another pouch that allows me to store uh, excessive ammunition. So let's just say a dangler right here, right? I can take a bunch of shells, throw them in here, pop it open, and feed a gun from there. These, of course, this is a Moonlight Industries placard. And I got this from them. They said, hey, what do you want? And I said, uh, I need a shotgun setup. So send me over this. I threw it on the AC-1 because um, I think the AC-1 is probably the best affordable plate carrier on the market for what it does. Um, maybe, well, I'd say the AC-1 is probably one of the better affordable plate carriers on the market. So you could take this, throw some armor in it. You can have a pretty cheap setup if you're looking to do it all kind of thing. It's, we're getting into some weird nuances, but bear with me. But essentially what you're going to want to have is a handgun of some kind. And uh, because once that gun goes dry, you're going to need to cover your ass somehow. So until you can reload again, right? And if you're working with a shotgun, chances are you're working at extremely close distances. So I chose the route of having body armor and handgun on me. Now, in theory, with running a shotgun, um, just like any other gun, you don't need much gear. I mean, you need to carry a lot of ammo with you. You can have a fanny pack and dump it full of shells. And, you know, I think James Reeves from TFTV, he talks about that being his favorite method. So there's more than one way to skin a cat, of course. Oh, that's a Travis Haley thing. Uh, hey, there's more than one way to skin a cat, okay? So breaking it down, how do we use the biomechanics of a shotgun? You know, working on Magpul Dynamics out of the shotgun, I really learned a lot about running the shotgun platform, okay? So we're breaking down that platform. All right. How do we use a shotgun in our battle hemisphere? All right. Okay, anyway, so I got two shotguns out here with me today. I have the HS-10B and I have the Remington 870, both of which have videos, both of which I can link for the HS-10B and for the Remington 870. I want to say it's going to pop up. What am I, righty, lefty? Usually it pops up like top to left, I want to say. It would be your left, though. Anyway, so we'll talk about them briefly. So the HS-10B, uh, this is some retro tech. It's got the Swively stock. I bought it because I'm a big fan boy of the retro stuff. I threw the Moonlight Industries uh, Velcro receptacle on here so I can smack on some shells in case I wanted to keep feeding the gun. This gun sucks terribly as far as feeding the shotgun goes. The trap door in here that... Um, you typically load shells in through. You have to depress this little button right here, at that which point it, allow, it drops the trap door. You can start loading up shells, but uh, the trap door in there is like really sharp and can catch your thumbs, so it kind of sucks. But it's still really fun to shoot, and it's got this huge mag light. And they even advertised it back in the day that you could like shoot it one armed. It was like advertised to cops, and I think there are some reference photos of some SWAT teams using these. Um, like in at least a group photo to where they all look super mean and scary like the old retro squat teams right but luckily one as cool as features is it can stand up on its own then i got the trusty old 870 the 870 i feel like looks really good on camera at least um is it my go-to shotgun setup no <laughs> no i'd rather have benelium 4 um which of course we'll get on the channel here in due time but this is just the shotguns I have on hand. Now, this has the fixed side saddle, which is more um, a throwback than now what everyone else is running Velcro stuff or detachable. I think Aridus Industries has cool detachable products for their shotguns. The only downside is that their like, products are kind of expensive as far as shotgun stuff goes. Because when I think of a shotgun, I think of an economic option for a firearm. Now, this is going to be a more expensive setup of an 870. Truly, you can get an 870 either for free, because you're probably going to get it handed down from someone in your family or you bought one and you got it for a good deal. So I got this from my buddy firing device on Instagram. He hooked it up um, and then I threw a bunch more money into it because um, I'm an idiot. But the Surefire uh, integrated pump is gonna be an expensive little part. The pump probably costs more on the shotgun than what I paid for for the shotgun. Um, and then you have the side saddle and then a, a Pred Defense speed feed. Um, little mag shell catch. This is good for like, say, if you want to have a quick slug on hand um, and you need to swap out because a lot of manipulating a shotgun is like just that. It's like, oh, hey, cool, we're engaging a threat. If you ever watch like Mad Pool Dynamics or the defensive shotgun like back in the day, they're talking about switching out rounds, slugs, and it's like a very being fine tuned to your weapon kind of system. So, wow, big fancy gun words. And then you got a little Trigicon RMR. Truthfully, you don't need this bad boy. It's just cool. Looks good for the camera. And then this is a, I want to say, a speed feed stock. I want to say. I can't remember at this point. It's been so long. But this holds four shells and the stock. The idea behind how I set this 870 up was I wanted to have as much ammunition on hand so I wouldn't have to grab any kit 
to use it, if that makes any sense. Of course, you always can it upscale, but I wanted to have, what is it? Let's do the math real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And then I want to say five, five to six in the tube. So you have a, what is it? Either, yeah, 15 to 16. Wait, 11 plus five. Yeah, 15, 16. Like 15 to 16 shells on you if I'm doing my math right. Was it seven in the tube? I can't remember. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Anyway, no one cares. Okay, so that's essentially the thought process, right? And then you got the red dot for just getting quick, you know, accuracy on target. That's kind of nice. Um, if you can always, of course, do a much cheaper red dot and save this for a better platform, but. 870s aren't a bad option for guys that are looking to get into guns and just be like, cool, I own a firearm. Uh, you know, in America, I think we have more so the culture of riflemen uh, before, you know, shotgunners. Shotguns are a very specific tool, and we as a nation were built on the foundation of being rebel riflemen, right? So they still serve a purpose, though, because it's still technically, well, it's not a rifle. It's a shotgun. It's an economic option to owning a firearm. Now, ammunition can get relatively expensive, but it's, you don't need much of it to cause a lot of damage. So typically how I envision just shotgun owners is that they are like, cool, I own a gun. Yeah, I'm a gun owner, I own a shotgun. And it's like, well, okay, you're not like an autistic gun owner like us, right? Where it's like, if you watch this channel, you're like me, it's like you, chances are you have a bunch of guns, a bunch of different guns. You are like always thinking about firearms, your girlfriend or wife or both, <laughs> bad joke, uh, is, always asking, hey, what's wrong? What's up? And you're just thinking about like, how can I sell this to get this? And I'm tired of having this because I want to buy this. You're thinking about what kind of RMR to put on your gun or what kind of LPVO would be good. You're just thinking, you're, you're in deep, dude. You're lost in the sauce, essentially. But I mean, you can always upscale your kit, right? So that's kind of where I am. I just want to do a hard and fast video on it. Sometimes I get these ideas and they float around in my head and I'm always just like, man, I gotta act on this dumb idea or else it's gonna drive me crazy. And talking about shotgun kit is one of them. So I figured, you know what, what do I have at my immediate disposal to set up my kit to be tailored towards shotgun stuff? And I took it to the extreme and made it as intricate as I could, when in reality, all I need is like a bag, like a little carrier bag, some kind of bag to hold shells, and you need your shotgun. And that's it. In classic true form fashion, I made this more complicated than I had to. But it's still fun because it gives me something to show off on the channel to appease the algorithm gods. Speaking of. Gentlemen, hey, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like, subscribe, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Your comments are a sacrifice to the algorithm god, a god of which who likes to pump, pump, pump the jams, a god of which who likes the pumped, pumped, pumped up kicks. <laughs> uh oh, canceled. And. All support is appreciated. If you want to support the channel in any way, shape, or form, Patreon is an excellent way to support the channel, as well as merchandise. Merchandise helps cover the cost for the channel. Turns out it's relatively expensive to run a YouTube gun channel because ammo and all these other things that come into play. Gentlemen, as always, stay easy, stay breezy, stay cover, girl. Country roads, take me home to the place I belong. West Virginia Okay, yeah, turn the run of ammo eventually.